Kids worship time. Welcome back, children. It is so good to see you. I'm so glad that you're here to worship together. Let's start the worship with a prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, thank you for bringing us to Yongnak Church so that we can give this worship to you. Lord, please forgive our sins and Lord, please be with us. And Lord, please give us your wisdom so we may. Understand the word of God and leave out your word. Lord, we love you and we thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, boys and girls, today's sermon title is Jesus Was Put on Trial. The sermon comes from the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So where are the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Are they in the Old Testament or New Testament? Yes, they are in the New Testament. Now let's open up the book of Luke, chapter 22, verses 67 through 70, and read together. They said, if you are the Messiah, tell us. But he said to them, if I do tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? And he said to them, You say that I am. Next, let's open up the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 59 and 60. Let's read together. The chief priest and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false testimony against Jesus so they could put him to death. But they could not find any. Even though many false witnesses came forward, finally two who came forward. Hi kids, I'm Rachel and I'm so excited you're here this morning. Who brought their Bible to church today? Hold up your Bible and show me. The Bible teaches us true stories and helps us better understand how we can have a relationship with Jesus. 
Over the past several weeks, we have been learning true stories about Jesus' time on earth during the week of his crucifixion. Today, we will learn about what happened to Jesus just hours before he was crucified. Today, we will learn that Jesus is our perfect king. Our big picture question is, how is Jesus the perfect king? How would you answer that question? The answer we will learn is Jesus perfectly rules over the universe as the king of kings. Our big picture question answer helps us understand that Jesus is ruling over every part of the universe and is always in control. He is the king who is in charge of all things. This means that when Jesus died for our sins, he was still the king in charge. Even though Jesus is innocent and sinless, he laid down his life willingly to save us. He's not just a king who rules, but who saves. That's amazing news. We have learned about many of the events that happened during the week before Jesus was crucified. We learned that he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey and was welcomed as king by the people. Then we learned about many of Jesus' warning to help people turn away from sin and trust him. Jesus' teachings helps us know that he is our perfect prophet who spoke God's words and fulfilled God's word. We also learn that Jesus is our perfect priest who came to be the perfect and final sacrifice for sin. Mary anointed him and worshipped him. Then Jesus shared the Passover with his disciples and told them about the new covenant he would establish. Finally, we read how Jesus was arrested. Today, we pick up the story after Jesus' arrest as the religious leaders put him on trial. The men who arrested Jesus led him to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest. The religious leaders were gathered there. They wanted a reason to kill Jesus, but they couldn't find one. Finally, two men came forward and said, This man said he can destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Caiaphas stood up and asked Jesus, Is this true? What do you have to say for yourself? But Jesus said nothing. Caiaphas said, I command you to answer, are you the Messiah, the Son of God? Jesus replied, yes, that's right. In the future you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of God, and you will see him coming on the clouds of heaven. Caiaphas was angry. He and the other religious leaders did not want to believe that Jesus is God's Son. They said Jesus was lying, but Jesus was telling the truth. Caiaphas tore his robes and said, this man has spoken against God. You all heard him. Now what should we do? The crowd said, He deserves to die. Then they spit in Jesus' face, hit him, and mocked him. The next morning, the religious leaders decided how they would kill Jesus. Then they took him to Pilate, the governor. Pilate asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Yes, that's right. Then the religious leaders made accusations against Jesus, but Jesus did not say anything. Pilate was surprised that Jesus was silent. Every year at Passover, the governor would free a prisoner, whichever prisoner the people chose. At that time, there was a prisoner named Barabbas who was very dangerous. So Pilate asked the crowd, Who do you want me to set free, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? The crowd answered, Barabbas! Pilate asked, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? The crowd answered, Crucify him! Pilate asked, Why? What has he done wrong? But the crowd kept shouting, Crucify him! Pilate saw that there was nothing else he could do, so he took some water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am not guilty of this man's death, he said. Then Pilate freed Barabbas and handed Jesus over to the crowd to be killed. Jesus was unfairly sentenced to die, although he did no wrong. Jesus was the perfect substitute for us, dying on the cross for our sins and rising from the dead. Everyone who trusts in Jesus has forgiveness and life 
with God forever. Soon after Jesus' arrest, he was put on trial. The high priest Caiaphas wanted to find something that would make Jesus guilty. Did Jesus ever do anything wrong? No! Jesus never did wrong. He never sinned. The two men who came forward and told Caiaphas what Jesus said about destroying the temple gave false testimony. This means they twisted Jesus' words to make it sound like he said something bad. But Jesus never said anything bad. After the religious leaders mocked Jesus and beat him, they wanted to kill Jesus. Who did the religious leaders take Jesus to? They took him to Pilate, who had the power to punish people for crimes. Jesus did not try to defend himself or prove his innocence when Pilate asked him questions. Then Pilate was able to free a prisoner. He gave the crowds the choice to free Jesus or Barabbas. Who did the crowd choose? They chose Barabbas. Then the crowd shouted to crucify Jesus. And Pilate gave them Jesus to be killed. Jesus was unfairly sentenced to die, although he did no wrong. Jesus was the perfect substitute for us, dying on the cross for our sins and rising from the dead. Everyone who trusts in Jesus has forgiveness and life with God forever. Luther Rice was born on March 25, 1783, to Amos and Sarah Rice in Northborough, Massachusetts. Luther was the youngest of nine children. When Luther was a teenager, he trusted Jesus as his savior and decided to commit his life to telling others about Jesus. Luther wanted to continue his education, so once he graduated from high school, Luther went to a local college. While at college, Luther met other young men who shared his passion for taking the message of Christ outside of America. The men prayed together and asked God to provide a way for an agency to be founded that would send missionaries to other parts of the world. In 1810, Luther Rice and his friends met Adoniram Judson, who had recently decided to also share the gospel across the ocean. Together, Rice, Judson, and the other young men petitioned that a missionary sending agency be created to support overseas missions. Those gathered took the steps to make that happen, and the first missionary sending agency was commissioned. Two years after the agency began, Rice, Judson, and three other men set sail for India to share the gospel. On their way to India, Adoniram and Ann Judson and Luther Rice felt led to embrace a baptism by immersion belief and became Baptist missionaries. Since there were no Baptist missionary sending agencies, one would need to be created. Luther returned to America and began preaching the importance of sending missionaries to other countries across the sea. By 1814, Rice had been instrumental in forming the first Baptist missionary sending agency in the United States. Though Luther Rice never returned to the foreign mission field, his influence in mission work led to the founding of 25 missions, consisting of 112 missionaries, and the creation of 15 colleges and universities dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Let's read today's key passage. Today's key passage is from the book of Revelations, chapter 5, verse 13. Let's read together. I heard every creature in heaven, on earth, under the earth, on the sea, and everything in them say, Blessing and honor and glory and dominion to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Our key passage teaches us that all parts of creation, whether in heaven on earth or in the sea will praise Jesus 
because he is the king on the throne. Everything was made to worship King Jesus, including us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, thank you for sending Jesus to die for our sin and pay the price for our wrong. Even when he did no wrong, we praise you for the grace and love you show us through Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's time to bring our offering. We can give offering through online or drop it at church. Now let's give our offering with our hearts and pray. Heavenly Father God, thank you for giving us an opportunity to give this offering to you. Lord, please accept this offering in our hearts. We give this offering out of our gratitude for what you have done and how much you love us. Lord, we would like to think about all the missionaries on the field. They went out uh, because they love you. Lord, please be with them, strengthen them, and provide their needs. Lord, please um, send more souls so they can come to Jesus through the work of um, our missionaries. And Lord, please remember Young Luck Church, Young Luck Education Department, and especially Young Luck His Ministry. Lord, touch our spirit, our body, and our hearts so that we can get to know you and love you and give you. Lord, please be with us and Lord, use us for your glory. Lord, we love you and we thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, boys and girls, now let's end the service by reciting the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, boys and girls, thank you for joining us. Happy Sunday. I'm so glad to meet all of you. Uh, I would like to tell you, and remind you once again, we still have the Friday blessings worship for your parents. Please come out and we can do lots of fun and we can learn about the Word of God, especially as we're um, spending this uh, Lent season. We would like to uh, think about the sacrifice of Jesus and His love and grace toward us. Um, please come out if you can and continue to follow the Lent calendar and let's um, meditate Jesus' sacrifice. And finally, I would like to tell you that uh, we have children's choir. Please come out and join us. And I would like to see more of you come out and join our in-person worship. We have lots of um, activities going on. So please stay healthy. And I hope to see you next time in person or online. 